privilege to be here. It's also a privilege to have a Bible in front of you and encourage you to open it to Philippians chapter 3, which is where we'll be today. We've been in a series called The Joy-Filled Life, and we're looking in the book of Philippians to answer the question, how can we live a joy-filled life? We've seen that it means living a life inside out. Uh, we've seen that joy is often upside down in God's economy. We've seen that joy is a life poured out. And finally, we've even just seen simply that it's a life in Christ. And so what we're doing is pressing ahead to try to unpack what it means to live a joy-filled life. And what we're going to find today, I think, is that uh, God has already taken hold of us. Will you take hold of him? There's a gentleman born in the 60s. His name is Richard Hoyt. Many of you have heard this story, but in the 60s he was born uh, with cerebral palsy. And the doctors told his parents when he was born that he would be a vegetable. So go ahead and put him in a, uh, an institution because he'll never have any function. And his parents didn't agree. His parents didn't like that word, and so they were obstinate and stubborn. And later, uh, as they went to the hospitals to try to figure out, uh, somewhere around age 11, Richard was able to speak through the use of a computer. And uh, the doctors in the room continued to say, look, uh, we think that he's going to be a vegetable his whole life. You might as well put him in an institution. So his dad said, also named Richard, tell him a joke. <laughs> and so they did. And Richard, the son, laughed. At age 11, they were able to give him a computer where he could speak. And his first words, he's living in Massachusetts at the time, were, go Bruins. <laughs> so this child, this 11-year-old with cerebral palsy, was finally able to begin not only to speak, but to learn the alphabet. And his mother helped him to understand better the world when he was in high school. There was an Area 5K run, which was raising money for a child with disabilities. And the son, Richard, asked his dad, so we'll call them Dick and Rick, that's what they go by, I'd like to do that. His dad described himself as portly and hardly able to run a mile, let alone 3.2 miles. But after thinking about it for a little bit, he thought, well, this is a good way to get my son involved. And they did. Dick ran the 5K with his son, Rick, in a wheelchair, 3.2 miles. At the end of the race, uh, his, his father, Dick, asked Rick, what did you think of the race? And Dick simply answered, uh, Rich, Rick simply answered like this, Dad, and he's typing this, when we were running, it felt like I wasn't disabled anymore. And that moment for Dick it changed the rest of his life. And so for decades and tons of races, they ran over a thousand races together with Dick running and Rick sitting in a wheelchair. Or they ran a triathlon as well, a dinghy, or on that triathlon, a, a specially made uh, seat for a bike. Can you imagine being a 25-year-old uh, man swimming in the triathlon out in Hawaii and you're passed up by a 60-something-year-old man with an adult son in a dinghy? That was happening. After decades and decades of running, in fact, they declared that 2013 would be their last Boston Marathon. They had run several. And 2013 was the year when the bomb was set off in the marathon. And so they, in fact, came back and ran in 2014. You can read about all of this, but I hope that you'll see this picture, this image of a son being carried by the father. The son has nothing to contribute to the race and that they've finished thousands of races. And I think what we'll find today is that as we read scripture, we continue to see that God holds you and me. Will you hold on to, will you cling to God himself? So let's...